I really want to help those who feel as though they're struggling between forward and former. <laughs> Y'all, I'm going to come for your edges in just a few more, but I'm trying to be nice. You find yourself, you have shifted forward into a new year, but sometimes my former keeps talking to me. And how do I handle when I know I need to move forward, but my former keeps on pulling me, and I really don't need any stuck-up Christian telling me, if you were a Christian, you wouldn't be struggling like that. The reason I'm struggling is not because I'm not saved, it's because I am saved. That's why I battle like this, because there was a time when there was no struggle. Okay, y'all don't want to talk to me today. There was a time there was no struggle. Whatever the flesh wanted to do, we did. If the flesh wanted to get high, we got high. If the flesh wanted to fornicate, we fornicated. If the flesh wanted to club, we clubbed. But ever since I met Jesus, there's this battle. That doesn't mean you're not saved. <laughs> That's irrefutable evidence that you are saved. Because there was a time you could do what you want. And for all of those who are battling, does God really want me? Does God really have a plan? This is something the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart. I want to see the scripture to corroborate my claim. I've heard of many unwanted pregnancies. But I really haven't heard of many unwanted adoptions. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us acceptable in the beloved. God chose us because he wanted you. And maybe this is just me. I'm thankful that God knew how crazy I was before he called me, but he still called me. I'm thankful that God knew all of my mistakes before he called me, but he still called me. So if you have been battling the thought that God doesn't want me or my past is too bad, the devil is a liar. So we're going to battle with that on today. God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us to see a brand new year, a year that we never saw before and a year that we will never see again. Thank you for the families that have made up their mind to dedicate their children as unto you. And for everybody who is making a public profession of Christ as King and getting baptized on today, I thank you that it will inspire others that I'm not going to be a half committed Christian, but this is the moment that I'm going to be all in. This is the moment that I'm going to be sold out. This is the moment where I made up my mind that this year you're boss. And help me live like that, just like I prayed in private. I also declare publicly, all of the study means absolutely nothing if you are magnified and if you aren't glorified. I'm asking that you use me as your oracle, the soundtrack, the PA system of heaven. And everybody who agrees with that prayer would just shout all over the room, in the house, and in the overflow, amen. amen. Can I get everybody in the house to make some noise for everybody watching all over the world? Thank you so much for joining us. Our foundational scripture, it could be a familiar passage of scripture depending on where you are in your Christian journey. If you could turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, we're going to exegete just a few verses, verses 12 through 14. If you do not have a tangible Bible, we'll have it projected for you on the screen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14 is our first foundational text, and then in a few moments, we're going to go to Isaiah. But this passage of Scripture spoke to me a little different on today. Verse 12, if you're ready, shout, I'm ready. The Apostle Paul says, not that I have already attained or am already perfect or perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Somebody say, that's behind me. That's behind me. 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press. Somebody say press. press. May not like it. I press. Uncomfortable. I press. Talking about me. I press. Gets difficult. I press. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Our clause of concern and our verse of emphasis and our first foundational text where we're going to park and spend some time together talking just for a few moments, lives and takes residence in verse 13 when Paul says, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. So Paul is saying, listen, I'm not saying... I have it all together. I'm not saying I've mastered this thing. I'm not saying I'm at this spiritual mountaintop and I'm above the rest of y'all. I'm not saying I got it all together, but one thing I do got, not have, we're speaking Ebonics on purpose. Not one thing I have obtained, one thing I have possessed. No, one thing I do got is that is I've learned how to leave things behind. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but one thing that I have learned how to do is I have learned I cannot move forward and still date and affiliate with former at the same time. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I have learned I cannot eat from this level while still eating from this level at the same time. The animal kingdom even teaches us this. This is why a giraffe and a clownfish will never be friends. <laughs> a giraffe and a clownfish eat on two different levels. In fact, a giraffe and a clownfish can fall in love, but where they gonna live? <laughs> where they gonna live? Because the giraffe will pass out, suffocate, and drown trying to have a conversation with the clownfish. And the clownfish will suffocate trying to have a conversation at the level of a giraffe. Ooh, I wonder who's drowning because you dating clownfish. <laughs> New Year, same edges. I wonder who's suffocating because you're trying to get at a height that you're not at yet. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Please don't get it twisted. I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do and one thing I've learned, I've learned how to not invite to my next what needs to stay in my past. I've learned how to do that. See, this is why last Sunday we dealt so intensely with habits. Because please hear me, you can't start a new chapter, maintain old habits, and expect a different outcome. So everybody's saying, oh, this year, this, no, okay. If your habits stay the same, the outcome of 2024 will be the same. Say, so listen, I, I, I'm not presenting myself to all of you brothers like I truly have learned everything. But I've learned that entries are married to exits. You cannot experience the blessing of an entry. In fact, let me say it like this. The blessing of an entry requires the sacrifice of an exit. Say it one more time. The blessing of an entry requires the sacrifice of an exit. You can't expect promised land entry if you won't exit Egypt. You can't expect Canaan land milk and honey if you don't exit slavery Egypt following everything the culture is telling you to do. You don't get the entry if you don't sacrifice and experience the exit. Brothers, I'm not saying I have it all together, but I've learned how to identify that which has expired. I've learned to identify spoiled things. 
so that I don't consume them and then blame God for why I'm nauseous. I've learned, okay, y'all going to have to help me preach. All right, everybody, we strive. I said, okay, I want everybody to get a red, never going back band on your wrist. If you have it, just put your hand in the air, never going back. Everybody, I want you to put this up real quick. If you don't have it, please help us, greeters. After service, you need to get you one. Blood red for the blood of Jesus. White because you got a fresh start. Can I get everybody to say this? I don't know why y'all put your hands down. Please put them back up. <laughs> I want everybody to say this as loud as you can. Say, last year, last year was, the last year. was the last year. Matter of fact, find two people around you and tell them, last year was the last year. Last year was the last year. Last year was the last year. Let, let, let's speak from this thought, from this subject for just a few moments on this afternoon. That was the last time. That was the last time. One more time. Somebody say, last year, last year. Was, the last year. was the last year. I'm never going back. I want you to have this band so before you go to your boyfriend's or your girlfriend's house and before you fornicate, you'll see this band right on your wrist and you'll remember last year was the last year. Before you go back to that hookah bar tonight or wherever you planned on going to it, I want this to be right in your face when you're about to puff so you remember that last year was the last year. Last year was the last year that I find myself calling Jesus the Prince of Peace but then needing a substance, a high, or alcoholic beverage to get some peace. That was the last time. That was the last time. Last year will be the last year that I stay multitasking between losing my mind, fake smiles, and happy posts. That was the last time. That was the last time. Last year will be the last year I blame others for the way my life looks. I blame others for the way I am and where I am. If my spouse would have did this, if my mama would have done this, if my pastor would have done this, I'm done with blaming because please hear me. You are not responsible for who you attract, but you are responsible for who you entertain. You are not responsible for everything they did, but you must be intentional with your healing. You must be intentional with coming to discipleship development. You must be intentional with your devotion time. Change never happens by accident. It only happens to those who are intentional. That was the last time. That was the last time. Last year was the last year I traffic in casual Christianity. Enough with that. This time, I'm going to have a made-up mind. This time, I've made a righteous resolve. This time, I'm not going to fall off after Easter. I'm still going to be pulling up the church in June. I'm still going to be pulling up in July. I'm still going to be faithful even when I face crisis. I'm going to be faithful when they talk about me and when they don't. Last year was the last year. Now, here we come for somebody's life right now. Last year was the last year that my singleness will feel like an asylum of loneliness and questioning value. <laughs> Enough with that. Thank you for the golf claps. That's okay. Enough with that. Stop questioning your value. Understand that when God made you, he made a masterpiece. Yes. And your value is set to priceless. And if anybody else can't discern that, that's their discernment issue, not your value issue. That was the last time. That was the last time. Last year is the last year my marriage stays on life support. We will recover. We will be mature. We will stop being petty. I will honor my wife and honor my husband. I will stop holding a record of wrong against them. We will transition from divorce paper to vacation packages. It's not going to just happen by saying that. It's going to require some intentionality. That was the last time. Last year was the last year you tried to get people to endorse what God called you to do. Last year was the last year you tried to get people to notice you. Because please hear me, and I hope this helps somebody. God gives you favor with people who matter to your assignment. They gotta matter. If they don't matter to you, 
then they must not matter to what you're supposed to do. But pastor, they keep bringing in my past against me. They can't see what I've done. Okay, hear me. God brings restoration to your reputation with people who are critical for your spiritual elevation. Bars. God will bring restoration to your reputation with people who are part of your spiritual elevation. And while I'm rhyming, let me keep on rhyming. Let me give you a revelation. Anybody who can't get over your past is giving you a revelation that they should stay there. Talk, Holy Spirit. Because those who are called to serve you recognize that all have fallen short and that we all need Jesus just like the next man. Enough with me trying to get people to notice me. God is going to give me favor with people who matter to my assignment. That was the last time. Last year was the last year that I'll be plagued by negative thinking. And we're praying now, God, let this mind that be in you also be in me. Help me renew my mind, oh God, and show me that negative thinking is the role that I'm playing in my own suffering. And give me a new kingdom perspective. God doesn't give you new strength just so that you can go back to the thing that broke you. God is not giving you new strength so that you can go back and experience a relapse. God gave you this new strength, this new focus, this new perspective so that you can advance, so that you can become. Your becoming process is also an unbecoming process. Embrace the journey. That was the last time. Here we go. Last year will be the last year that I'm bound by pornography, masturbation, and my vibrator. I can be free in Jesus' name. It's going to get quiet because somebody already engaged in it in 2024. Let me talk to you for a second. I don't know why y'all looking like that. I'm not scared to preach the truth. You know what I'm learning real quick? Timid preaching makes comfortable sinners. Talk Holy Spirit. Timid preaching produces comfortable sinner. sinners. Fire preaching gives you two options. You're going to catch on fire from this word, and it's going to burn up every area in your life that God is telling you to rid yourself of with, and you're going to experience the refiner's fire, or the heat's going to offend you and you never come back. Good preaching brings you closer to Jesus or closer, closer to Jesus and further from your sin. When your relationship with sin changes, your relationship with God changes. One affects the other. Either your sin is keeping you from devotion or your devotion is keeping you from sin. I know we think pornography, masturbation, and your vibrator, your bullet, that it's a safe sin. But what it does is it pollutes the mind. It pollutes the mind, and the enemy knows this because he knows, okay, if I could have them in secret, then they'll never see things through spirituality. They'll only see things through sensuality. So you can't see him as a brother. You keep seeing him as a potential husband or orgasm exchange. You can't see her as a sister. you struggling when she lifts her hands up and stands up and gives God praise. You have to struggle, and you're going through a war zone because you're trying to focus on the word versus focusing on her backside. And God said, I want to deliver you from that this year. I want to help you with that. Listen, the enemy will make sure that your secret imaginative desire gets an opportunity to carry out itself with the flesh. I'm going to make sure that your weakness has an opportunity. Why? So that you can waste time. You could waste time. I'm going to keep on talking because it's awkward for many of us. <laughs> it's not awkward for me, but porn is a cruel slave master that beats us with shame, beats us with guilt, beats us with feeling hopeless, and for some strange reason, we keep on going back to the plantation of an explicit website. Keep on going back there. And what God is saying, I don't want twig makeovers anymore. I want root transformation. Twig makeovers, if you just clip the twig, it's going to grow back. 
But if I could deal with the root of where it started, that was the last time. Last year is the last year that I don't steward the currency of my time well. Because if I was a note taker, I would write this down. You know how much money is in your bank, but you don't know how much time is on your clock. I know that you did not expect this on, new, on a first Sunday of the new year. <laughs> well, if you did, you know me. You know how much money is in your bank? Open up your Bank of America app, your Cash app, your Wells Fargo, whoever your banking institution is. You know how much money is in your bank, but you don't know how much time is on your clock. This is why the biggest contributing factor to our spiritual laziness is we think we have more time. You think you're going to get up in the morning. You do. You think that you're going to see your birthday. You think that you're going to be here for Resurrection Sunday. You think that you're going to be experiencing Christmas of 2024. You think that so you live like you have time. But what if you live like, God, teach me to measure my days. To help me remember how fleeting I am. And what the Holy Spirit was breathing and impressing upon my heart as I was engaged in sermon prep this week. First digest it for yourself, Jerry. Then share it with my people and for my people that the blessing of letting go is you will finally get the blessing of what was coming. Talk. Hear me. Please hear me. The blessing. See, we don't view letting go as a blessing, but the blessing of letting go causes for us to get the blessing of what was coming. Shift your perspective. You didn't lose what God had for you. Perhaps you lost what God, perhaps you lost what was blocking what God has for you. Did y'all catch that? You didn't lose what God had for you. Perhaps you lost what was blocking what God has for you. This time, I want my people to be able to trust me when I say move. Trust me when I say stop. Trust me when I say let go. Trust me when I say let's go. When I move, you move just like that. <laughs> I need them to understand that you must be intentional with your time. And hear me, the enemy always tries to haunt us with our past. Why? Because if he can haunt you with your past, you'll waste time today because you're missing, regretting, or hurt from yesterday, which is blinding you from the blessings God is doing today and planning for tomorrow. This is so good, y'all. I try to get them to be hunted by their past, but your past is supposed to just be a point of reference, not a place of residence. This is so good, y'all. This, this passage of Scripture hit a little different this week, and I want us to see it. In Isaiah 43, verse 18. Isaiah 43, verse 18. It's going to show us really the personality of God as he's speaking to Israel because there are going to be a lot of places today that lie to you this is your best year this guy's like if they don't surrender to me it's not if they don't listen to me nope the same year and I don't ever want to be guilty of lying to you see this is how you could tell when a preacher loves you if a preacher tells you what you don't want to hear but gets you closer to God they love you if a preacher tells you what you want to hear, they don't love themselves and they need your affirmation to feel good about themselves. So I'm appreciating you things that get likes and get follows because I'm insecure about myself and I want people to like me so I can't tell you the truth at the expense of my fragile ego. So I'm using your soul as a measuring rod of me feeling good about me. But when a man or a woman has been secured by God in the pasture, he can tell boldly what God wants them to say at a platform. 
So listen, I, I want you to see this. Isaiah 43, verse 18. The Lord says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Do not dwell on the past. Dwell comes from the word dwelling, which means inhabit. In Hebrew, inhabit and dwell is yashab. Yashab, it means to sit, remain, or to be part. That's yashab. So let's put this newfound biblical wisdom together. Forget the former things and do not sit in the past. Do not remain, do not be part on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is saying, forget the former stuff. Don't Yashub there. Don't dwell there. Don't park there. He's trying to give us a forward word because the danger of a people not having a forward word when we don't have a forward word will always revert back to familiar chaos. We'll always revert back. He's saying, don't dwell. Don't park there. Don't park on who didn't invite you to a New Year's Eve party. You're different this year. You can't perceive it. Don't park there. Don't you dare park on an X page. Stop monitoring and lurking on the very thing that left your mental health on life support. Stop monitoring the very thing that caused for there to be an interruption between you and me. When you were there, we weren't talking. When you were there, we weren't communicating. It's not that they left you. I had to remove them now so that I don't have to remove the knife from your back later. Don't park there. Don't park there. Don't park on what they did do or what they didn't do. Don't park there. Don't park there. Some of us, what we need for the rest of this year is a big do not park here sign on our head. <laughs> Y'all laughing. I'm serious. On your heart, you need a do not park here. I am not going to park in anything that God doesn't want me to be parked in. I'm not going to pursue anything that God does not want me to pursue. I'm not going to reflect and use my mind meditating on what if scenario and what if scenario after what if scenario. The only time you should use your mind to reflect on the past is when you are tracking God's faithfulness. Yes. That's it. That is it. So what you remember will be your aggravation or your ammunition. You pick. Whatever you reflect on when you use your mind to think back, it should be because I'm tracking God's faithfulness. He's the same God that got me through that. He's the same God that's going to get me through this. The same God that kept my sanity last year is the same God that's going to keep my sanity this year. The same God that paid the bills last month is the same God that's going to provide and pay the bills this month. The same God that gave me sweet sleep last night is the same God that's going to give me sweet sleep on tonight. It doesn't matter what I face. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. This is why I live a life of worship because worship shifts your focus from the problem to the problem solver. I'm not saying that your problems are going to go away this year, but I'm saying when you live a life of worship, you will put your problem in the presence of the problem solver. And when you compare your problem to the size of the problem solver, you'll say, my God is bigger than this. Don't park there. Somebody say he's the same God. And then he asks, do you not perceive it? That part. That's the part that I'm most concerned about. That's why new series we start next Sunday, first new series of the year, Firefighters. Can you perceive what's keeping you from not burning? Can you perceive it? The reason this word is hitting so hard for somebody right now is because your heart is truly a spiritual construction site. And God is tearing down strongholds that have been in your life. And he's breaking mindsets that have been in your life because he's trying to get you to change. Can you not perceive it? You know why the sin doesn't hit the same? It's because you met me. Can you not perceive it? Can you not perceive it? Can you not see that there is a remnant of those who truly love me and shun evil? Yeah. 
that I'm rising up so that they can be my beacons of light in the earth. Can you not perceive it? Can you not perceive that I am exposing my true shepherds from popular wolves? Can you not perceive how I am exposing those? Can you not perceive it? Can you not perceive I'm teaching you how to maximize your time because you are li living in the end days, the last days. So I need you to maximize your time. Can you not perceive it? I'm giving you a brand new appetite. That's why that weed didn't hit that good last week, did it? Can you not perceive it? You don't even enjoy hanging with them anymore. You're trying because it's familiar. But every time you try, something feels off in your spirit. Can you not perceive it? Can you not perceive that I'm trying to give you a new appetite? And the things you used to enjoy now taste spoiled. Because I'm increasing your discernment. Can you not perceive it? There was a time anybody who claimed to be a Christian you would listen to. Now your ears are a little more sensitive. You're trying to see, is this biblically accurate? Is this sound theology or is this just sound good, but it's not sound or good? Is this proper exegesis? Is this biblical hermeneutics or is, them try, is this them trying to get a reaction? Can you not perceive it? See, when you don't have discernment, you end up trying to give your heart to somebody who wants your body. This is so good. Can you not perceive it? Perceive it. And this is what God is trying to get us to understand. Now that I've given you a new year and new time, I need you to ensure that you are being intentional with not reflecting on past time. Because one of the ways the enemy steals your current time is by getting you to reflect on past time. Stop feeling disqualified because of past time. That's blood covered. And when I see you, all I see is the blood. But God, I did this. What you talking about? My son covered that. It's covered by the blood. Stop allowing the enemy to steal current time because you're still reflecting on past time. That's expired. Can I get all of us to say this as loud as you can? Everybody watching, could you put this in a room in all caps? Can I get us to say this? Father, Father give, us the give us the discernment to recognize, to recognize that, which expired. that which has expired. I won't consume, I won't consume what's, spoiled. what's spoiled in Jesus' name. Jesus. One more time. Father, Father give us the discernment. To recognize, to recognize that, which expired. that which has expired. I won't consume, I won't consume what's, spoiled what's spoiled in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Never going back. One of the things, you can relate to this if you've ever been on a basketball team, football team, volleyball team, baseball, whatever competitive sport team you've ever been on one of the things about competitive sports is we have something called review film and these are days when we will study our weaknesses our strengths and not only that we would also review film of our opponents especially if they had a special player we wanted to be able to know what was that special players weakness our strength you're gonna walk around here talking about that was the last time and last year was the last year and I'm never going back you have an enemy that's reviewing film <laughs> because all of us are special because we're anointed we've been anointed by the anointed one and so what he wants to do let me review film where I can see their weaknesses and this is the area that I don't believe is taught on enough. How does the enemy get us to go back to the things that God brought us out of? He gets, it, gets us to go back by giving us withdrawals. <laughs> withdrawals. Why are we teaching that part more? 
I heard, and I'm not minimizing, who the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. That's Bible. We shout, okay, I've learned how to leave things behind. That's great. I'm right there with you, the Apostle Paul. We talk about forget the former things and don't dwell on the past. Yush up. Some of us learned a new word. You talk to people, I'm not yush up in, in 2024. I'm different. But what about when you miss it, though? See how quiet it's getting? <laughs> that part, that's why I want to park for the remainder of our time before we baptize these people. What, how do you handle when, yes, you're given a new year, yes, you're forgiven, yes, you're a kingdom citizen, but you miss what it was like when you were a commoner? <laughs> and don't question, am I saved? I'm just being honest. Sometimes I miss it. And not speaking about this enough has Christians thinking they're not saved when they're going through withdrawals. You better pray more. You, you need to fast more. What's wrong with you? you, you have you really accepted Christ? Do you really believe? Old school church, they put your hand on your belly and oh, 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 come out, oh, do all of that. Okay, nothing's wrong with my stomach, but I just miss what it felt like. I, I miss what it did for my mind. I, what do you do when you miss it? And if we don't talk about this enough, we will be people who have injured souls but fake smiles. And we'll never know what true freedom feels like. Because we've mastered acting as though I'm over it, but you're really not. What do you do when your decision to be sold out, you're second guessing? Because now I'm 37, no candidate for marriage. Nobody's following my ministry. What do you do with the withdrawal? See, the reason it's getting so real right now is because me personally, this is just personally, I hated hearing messages that gave me hype with no biblical handles. Because all you did was shout and dance, but went right back with the same chains on. I want to know, how do I break this? The first thing is I have to desire a pure heart. A pure heart. Look, Bible all day. Psalms 51, verse 10. The psalmist says, create in me. To create means you don't have it. I don't have it yet. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God. And renew a steadfast spirit. What does steadfast mean? Steadfast is unwavering loyalty. Renew a unwavering loyalty spirit within me. See, you really don't know if somebody's loyal until they have options. <laughs> I know my man loyal. Okay, has he seen somebody finer than you yet? Has he seen somebody smarter? I know she loyal. Has she seen somebody who looks better? It's not until they have options and still choose you that you really know if somebody's loyal or not. Why do you think God put Adam and Eve in the garden and they had options? Because if they did not have options, it would not be love. I give you free will so that you can show me with your free will how much you love me. If I force you to be with me, that's not love, that's control. So I'm giving you options. Do you want me? Do you want life or death? Do you want blessings or cursings? I'm going to help you out. Choose life. Then Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So this means the way you see is tied to the quality of your heart. Everybody's fake. Something's up with your heart. Everybody's trying to hurt me. Something's up with your heart, not them. Oh, this freed me as a pastor. When I learned that people see from their heart, not their eyes, 
It's what's going on in the heart. The heart, and this is why I've said this many times, but I've learned how to add to it. This is why I've learned what withdrawals truly is. Withdrawals are the heart's way of raging once a pattern has changed. This is normal. This is what it feels like when toxicity is leaving the body and your heart is getting pured. I'm trying to help somebody. Thank you for the two golf claps. But I promised, I promise you, if I could have logged on when I'm 22 years old, a senior in college, and saw a sweaty preacher tell me what you're experiencing is called withdrawals. And that doesn't mean you're not saved. It's actually normal. It's the heart's way of raging because your pattern has changed. This is what it feels like when toxicity is leaving your body and God is purifying your heart. Man, that would have helped me. That would have helped me. I've been to so many altar calls because I felt like because I missed it, because I still wanted to do it, because my taste buds haven't changed, what's wrong with me? And then I recognize that God is trying to regenerate your heart. And so there's, 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 a, there's a chart I want us to see. Now watch this. For everybody who's fasting, please hear me. Wherever your flesh, flesh rages the most when you fast is showing you where stronghold is. It's getting quiet in here. Flesh raging because you're not scrolling to distract yourself from I don't really like my life, but now I can't scroll. And now you have to sit in the fact that scrolling has been distracting you from those silent moments. And it's really uncomfortable. That fast is going to show you this is where a stronghold is. This is where the enemy has been holding strong your perspective. And you have been distracting yourself into spiritual death. And you can't even see that every quiet moment is God trying to have a speaking moment. But you fill it with IG. That's Instagram. You fill it, fill it with Facebook. How about fill it with me so I can fill you with me? So I, I want us to see this, this chart. <laughs> because it's so easy for you to pray. God, if this is your will, stop it. <laughs> Block it. Reroute it. And then God does the craziest thing. He stops it. <laughs> he blocks it. He reroutes it. And then you cry, God, why? <laughs> you pray, God, show me their true colors. And God shows you every color of the rainbow. <laughs> See, but you know what it is? Many of us love with a paintbrush. What do you mean, Pastor? God shows you their true colors, you repaint it. I could change that. I could change this. Well, all I need to do is God shows you a red flag, you repaint it green. Y'all laughing, but there are many people in here who have paintbrushes. And you love with a paintbrush. Ooh, can I mess y'all up? You know why storms hit so hard? Because it causes for whatever you painted to show us true colors. Yes. Everything that you tried to cover up a different color, the storm washes it away. Yes. Maybe this is why you keep experiencing storm after storm after storm. It's not because something you're doing is God is showing you, no, that's red, that's red, that's red. No, stop making it blue. That's red, that's red, that's red. Stop coloring it green. That's red, that's red. Stop loving with a paintbrush so that I can show you the true colors. So th this chart, I believe, will help many people. I try to give us biblical teaching along with practical handles so that you could apply the biblical teaching, okay? The first thing that happens is there must be exposure. You're exposed to the gospel. You're exposed to kingdom teaching. You're exposed to sound theology. Why is that important? Because once you get exposure, now you've got options. Before the exposure, all you have is C, ratchet. That's it. They curse you out, C, I curse them, curse them back out too. They cut you off on 45, C, I'm going to cut them off and flip them a finger. That's all you have is C. 
When you get biblical teaching, you get A, self-control. You get B, a wise man can overlook an offense. You get D, I'm a living epistle representing all men. What do I look like flipping somebody off at 45? You're a greeter and you see them come to church Sunday. (laughs) So now, because I've been exposed to kingdom teaching, I got options when they act a certain way. Am I going to circle A, B, C, or D? Then after you have those options, now you got to make a decision. You're going to be sold out or not. You're going to be for real, for real, or for fake, for fake, or for kind of, for kind of. Which one are you going to be? But here's the thing. Once you make the decision, you're going to have withdrawals. That's when you're in the middle of forward and former. That's when Paul says, the good I want to do. That I don't do. But the evil I don't want to do, that I do. What a wretched man I am. Who can deliver me from this body of death? Why aren't we talking about the withdrawal phase? And since we're not talking about what it feels like when you're having withdrawals, we hide our issue and create secret warfares. And warfares always come with wardrobes. This is why you have learned how to wear a happy face and then how you know how to wear a lone depression. Because when you're in warfare, it gives you many wardrobes. And here's the thing. After withdrawals, that's when you have the freedom. See, this is, we usually expose and then just say, be free. Okay? After expose, I got to give you teaching so that you can make your own choice. Then once you make your own choice, I'm talking about now, you're going to experience discomfort here. You're going to experience persecution here. The America church cannot handle persecution. We get offended if somebody's sitting too close. We get offended if it's a little too cold outside. If somebody looks at us funny, what you going to do if you have to get your head chopped off for your faith? What you going to do if you have to get persecuted for Christ? We're upset it's a little too crowded. I can't imagine if somebody started opening the roof because they're letting somebody down in the the church. (laughs) We've been preaching soft Christianity, which has made comfortable sinners where we don't feel we need to decide. We think God is cool with both sides. And so we traffic in lukewarm, but then we want fire miracles. Okay, it's the process. Withdrawals, that's how you get freedom. Freedom. How do I know if I'm free, Pastor? It's when you don't want to do it. Everybody's not there. You can shout like you are, but everybody's not. There are certain people, just the smell of marijuana is a struggle for you. And then there are other people who you used to do it, but now when you smell it, you're like, man, I thank God you delivered me from that. That's not everybody, though. It's not everybody, and that's okay. Keep allowing God to regenerate your heart. Keep allowing God to shift your focus. Withdrawals. It's the heart's way of raging once a pattern has changed. And that's okay. This is normal. This is what it feels like when toxicity is leaving the body and your heart is being purified. Now, This is the part that I've learned. Withdrawal season always requires wilderness season because God loves you. Anybody who's in a wilderness is because of withdrawals. Let me give you a Bible. Okay, Exodus chapter 13. Y'all look correct, right? Uh, Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. It says, Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the Egypt, have let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. Somebody say shortcut. Shortcut. 
So that was a shortcut, but God didn't take that route. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their mind when they see war and return to Egypt. So God is like, you're free from that, but you're not ready to fight. So God let the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. God never takes the shortcut. Anybody who's offering you a shortcut is not authored by the king. The enemy gives you shortcuts. God likes to take the scenic route. <laughs> he sure does, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm going to give you a wilderness, and this bless me, y'all. I don't want them to see you having withdrawals. You're going to detox from Pharaoh before you get next level. You're going to detox from what your ex said before I send someone else. You're going to detox from church hurt. Before I let you discover this, I need you to embrace the withdrawals because I'm purging your heart. What kind of love is that? Where he's like, I know they're going to judge you, Jerry, by your struggle. So I'm not going to let them see it. I'm going to place you nine years as a student pastor upstairs, 40 people every week. And I want you to be faithful there. See, we have to stop thinking purpose is a destination. Purpose is a role. Your purpose is not just a destination. It's your role for each season. My role for nine years was to teach high school, middle school, and college students every Wednesday and every Sunday. High school students are not going to say amen, pastor. They're not going to say, oh, that was good. You better preach. <laughs> They're not. So you know what? I'm going to give you the toughest crowd. So when you have the toughest crowd, you're not shifted based on what they say because you're used to silence. I'm going to teach you how to be innovative, how to be creative. I'm going to teach you how to break down the gospel to a 13-year-old because you're going to meet 40-year-olds who never heard this before. And you must be able to simplify the gospel down to the lowest common denominator. And I'm going to let you have this atmosphere for nine years. Nobody's going to know your name. Nothing's going to go viral. You're not going to go on a Bible app. You're not going to have some video that causes somebody to book you. You're going to be in the wilderness and you're you're going to learn and you're going to train and you're going to be purged and you're going to fail and then you're going to get up and then you're going to fail and then you're going to get up and then you're going to fail and I'm going to use this season of your life because when it's time for me to expose you to the world, when it's time for me to lift you as a global voice, I've worked all that out in the secret places. Now you're ready. Now you can cook. Now you can show my glory. Now you can use your anointing for me. And don't you dare think it's about you because you're just a vessel. Nothing special. I'm the one that's special because I'm working in you. He uses those wilderness seasons to get it out. And I'm still praying the same prayer that I was praying when I was in the wilderness. God, anything that's not like you, flush it out. If it will stop me from praying like this, don't give it to me. If it will cause me to stop seeking your face, don't give it to me. Because I want you more than I want anything else. Don't let me lose that fire. Don't let me lose that flame. Don't let me use that hunger. If you show me, God, that you are better than porn, that you are better than masturbation, you got show me you're better than that because once you show yourself better than that to me I'm gonna give you everything I got I'm gonna preach every sermon like it's my last I'm gonna sweat I'm gonna yell I'm gonna teach I'm gonna study because you're just that good yeah. you're just that good what I look like sweating in the club doing all this stuff and then I stand before here and I care about looking cute and pretty. I didn't care, care about people thinking when I was in the world. Some of us are too sanctified and saved to give God all the glory because you care what people think about you. Versus look what God did. Look what God did. So these are the steps. 
And then let's baptize everybody. Yes. These are the steps. Point number one, there must be a divine knocking. Divine knocking. What is that? That's when Jesus is trying to say, let me in. Your marriage, your mind, your singleness. And here's the thing about God. He's not banging. He's knocking. He's knocking. And it doesn't stop, y'all. I don't know if y'all tried it. It doesn't stop when, just because you want to go to sleep, just because you met a new woman, just because you met a new, met a new man, just because I'm the man of God and I know my call. It doesn't stop. He knocks. What is he saying? Give me a life. Give me a life. So fascinating. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. People usually quote this scripture out of context. They usually use it for salvation. But really, this is a letter to the church of Laodicea. Think about the context. Jesus is knocking on the door of the church saying, will you let me in? (laughs) Whatever y'all got going on in there, I'm not in it. Can you let me in? Because if you let me in, I want to fellowship with you. I, I want to teach. Can you not perceive many of our churches don't invite Jesus in? I believe this prophetically. Watch it come to pass. God's going to continue to expose his true kingdom gatherings from entertainment centers that have forged his wife's name by calling it a church. I'm telling you. He's going to expose those that are just social clubs versus those that are ecclesia, my churches. First is the divine knock. It's when God is saying, let me in. Number two, it's divine entrance. Because he's not going to come in unless you open the door. But once you open the door, oh boy, (laughs) you got to let me in. I got to be able to come in so I can introduce myself. This is my personal pet peeve with a lot of ministries. We're talking to people about freedom and obedience, and they haven't even opened the door yet. They don't know how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is still knocking at their door and they haven't opened it yet. First is the divine knocking. Then it's the divine entrance. After the divine entrance, then number three is divine instruction. You hear my voice? Harden not your heart. Let me in. Now I can give you some instructions. That, that's not my will. Let that go. Apologize. That wasn't kingdom. No, I know it hurts your ego, but that's what we do in the kingdom. We own our faults. Tell them I was a little rough to you. I shouldn't have said it like that. Apologize. Let me instruct you. Because as he's instructing you, he's interrupting you. That's the Jesus we don't preach enough. We preach about him being the way, but we don't preach enough about him getting in the way. When I'm in your life, I'll get in your way. You were going to go over our house tonight, huh? (laughs) You're going to hear this message. (laughs) He's going to get in the way. So he could be the way and lead you the way that he desires for you to go. Number four, divine construction. What culture taught you, unlearn that. That's mama's wound, not your model. Unlearn that. Divine construction. During firefighters, timing, you might feel wrecked. That's good. That's the Holy Spirit literally tearing down perspectives so that he could have construction. And last point, divine production. This is it. Divine knocking, divine entrance, divine instruction, divine construction, divine production. That's how it starts. Seven weeks. Seven weeks in timing. Why? 
so that we can make decisions that are wise with our time while we're in time. And there have been several people who have made this vow. I'm going to be sold out, and I want to demonstrate that on the day. And what we're going to do as a community of believers is we're going to celebrate all those who are going to get baptized right now. And hopefully when we have baptism Sunday again, you'll sign up for it too. But this is what I want us to declare over our lives. I'm never going back. It wasn't loud enough for me. I want hell to hear it. I want people driving by to hear it. Can they shout as loud as you can? Never going back. Never going back. Now remember that when you're tempted to have withdrawals to go back. So God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this moment. And as we are about to make a public demonstration of an inward transformation, help us inspire others that we are truly the only Bible that somebody will ever read. Don't let this word leave our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.